Hey there guys, what's up? It's Autobot Mike 18 here with another TV episode review. Guys, what's up? I've been inactive on YouTube for most of the weekend. I'm usually not, especially when a movie that I want to see comes out in the theaters. In this case, this weekend it was for Chappie. And uh, yeah, it's been a long week and for me guys, as some of you know, in my last video my channel update, I was working on a film. I shot for the last two days, Friday and Saturday. I am done shooting for now. I have more stuff to shoot in April, but I can relax for a bit now. But yeah, I'm a little tired. I've had a long weekend. And, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry again for the lack of videos this weekend, guys. But Sunday nights, I'm free for the most part. The next couple weeks, I don't think I'm going to be. So I'm gonna, I am don't know if I'm going to have reviews up for the, the final few episodes of The Walking Dead. Because uh, there's only three left, believe it or not. I can't believe there's only three left. Wow. Um, anyway, guys, tonight's episode of The Walking Dead. I've just watched it a little while ago. I'm going to review it right now. Uh, this review is for The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 13, titled Forget. And as you guys know, if you watch my Walking Dead reviews, spoiler, spoiler, heavy. I'm going to spoil the crap out of this thing, guys, so be prepared for it. I'm sorry I'm, I'm not that energetic, guys, again, as I said. like I'm, I'm watching myself right now over the webcam, and I'm like, yeah, I don't have that much energy. It's because I'm tired. I'm kind of tired. I, um, yeah, I'm beat. All right, guys. Um, it's been a long weekend, and you guys are awesome. You understand that, and you, you've been giving me so many positive comments on my last channel update, my last video on my channel update, and you guys are great. I really appreciate that, you know, all the understanding and everything. You guys rock. Anyway, so guys, let's get into tonight's episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, we basically, uh, we pick up where last week ended. Um, and for, I forgot for a second where last week ended. Oh yeah, it was that last scene with Rick, Carol, and Daryl. And uh, we were focusing on uh, more of this Alexandria uh, storyline. Uh, this group, uh, Rick's group, having arrived at Alexandria, they're... Um, Starting to slowly adjust to life there. However, Rick, Daryl, and Carol got their secret meetings going on, whether it be inside the walls of Alexandria or outside, because they know something's up and they're not going to have it. Um, so I really like how that's going on and how we explore more of Alexandria in this episode. Um, we get to see a really interesting party scene, uh, like a housewarming party scene. And it honestly, like anybody, let, let's just say, like anybody was like flipping channel stations, and they come to channel 43, and the inf the info bar says The Walking Dead, and we just see all these people, all these well dressed, well groomed people, drinking liquor and uh, <laughs> looking all fancy and everything, and then uh, everyone's like, "Wait, this is The Walking Dead, the show with zombies? What is this?" Um, I don't know. I just I thought that as I was watching the episode. I don't know if that, if that was just me. I don't know. I thought that's kind of funny. Anyway, so uh, let's go through tonight's episode. Tonight's episode, we have, uh, honestly, I, I didn't like it as much as last week's episode. I thought it was a little bit slower and it wasn't as exciting. And I think that's probably because last week, uh, with the group arriving in Alexandria, we had that like element of surprise. Like We didn't know what we were going to get from this place. And we had a, like a lot of great moments last week that could have easily been a lot more suspense like that built suspense very well and this week like we had that kind of but it was like dumbed down a little bit you know what i'm saying um like there there were some interesting moments with carol rick and daryl meeting and talking about their, their tr basically their storyline there was like three storylines tonight it was rick and and uh carol uh and their plot with with this with these guns uh then we focused on daryl and aaron and then kind of on Sasha a little bit. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically what happened tonight. But um, yeah, we, we had the whole thing. Because we still don't know what happened to that gun that Rick left in the blender outside of the Alexandria walls. Um, and Rick's still trying to f figure that out. And he doesn't trust this. I mean, the group is like, they're like, yeah, this place is cool. Like we, I, It's hard to find a flaw here, you know. They've got food and everything. They seem nice. But... There are flaws in regards, and I talked about this last week, there are flaws in regards to how they're able to um, sort of establish themselves in this world. For example, we see that this throughout the episode that this place definitely is filled with uh, 
moments that show that these people are weak and they really haven't been out there that long. Namely, there's no person in the watchtower to look out in the watchtower. Um, and that really upsets Rick and Sasha, even who is a good shot and wants the position of uh, being in a watchtower. Um, I want to hold that position. She's a good shot. We see that in the beginning of the episode. She's firing off those sniper rounds. I don't know why they had her doing that. There were a lot of also there were a lot of moments that really weren't clarified well, in my opinion. I mean, I think part of it is Sasha coping, still reeling from what happened to Tyrese. I mean, that's shown especially in the the housewarming party scene. Um, but then I I think the like I don't know why she looked like like really scared and like angry when she was firing at those picture frames in the woods i'm not sure um but yeah we i liked that that all those shots like that montage of shots of everybody at the party and then you just get the close-ups on sasha and then you could tell that she's like doesn't feel comfortable in the space and she just feels that this isn't like their proper surrounding or whatever i really liked that that was in uh tonight's episode even though sasha that was like one of the like minor storylines um I think I want to go into Daryl and Aaron's storyline because that wasn't that um, uh, like uh, uh, longer as, uh, or as elaborated on as Rick's was with uh, Carol and uh, their plot that they have going on along with Daryl. But for the majority of the episode, Daryl and Aaron are on the hunt for this horse that they'd like to capture. Uh, Daryl's, I think, in the woods. I forget what he was doing in the beginning of the episode. And then uh, he, he hears someone coming and... He, uh, he sees that it's Aaron, and I think that they fooled us last week into thinking that Daryl was in danger, and they don't really trust him because of what happened in the end of last week's episode. He charged that one guy and, uh, you know, like, sort of, like, tackled him onto the ground, uh, and, like, had him in, like, a like a, like a a neck grab or something like that, and um, I think that made a lot of people think with the promo and the shot of Aaron firing the rifle. A lot of people were like, is Aaron going to, like, is Deanna telling Aaron to kill, to pick off Daryl? Because they don't trust him. And it turns out, after the whole bit with uh, Daryl and Aaron trying to get the horse, they fail. It gets eaten by zombies. <laughs> um, yeah, they head back to Alexandria. And later on, this scene was pretty interesting. Daryl's walking around at night. Everyone's at this party scene. There's, it's like they're, they're cutting in between. And uh, Aaron comes outside and invites Daryl inside to have spaghetti with uh, uh, with himself and Eric. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to end well. The redneck having spaghetti with the two gay guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was a little interesting. Um, but I like where they're going with uh, Aaron and Eric. I mean, I think Eric's just like one of those characters. Like, he's just so supporting. I mean, like, we've only seen him a couple times. Um, I like this Aaron character though because he's he's still like a little mystic like he's very nice and um, like he's very sweet and almost charming in a way but then again like he's still like I still get that feeling that you really can't 100% trust him and that something is going on like something big is going on between him and I think something they're hiding something I don't know if it's a flaw in the place or if it's just something bad that happened in the past that they're hiding from the group or maybe they they do some weird things like the governor has done I don't know yet but I do know that I just can't 100% trust this Aaron guy um, I'm not going to say whether or not I trust Eric because we haven't really seen enough of him. And honestly, I think if they want to establish that relationship, they need like more of the two of them. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how I feel about that. And then it, it turns out that Aaron, uh, nobody gave Daryl a job in the last episode. And again, I think that was to throw everybody off and make everyone think, do they trust Daryl? Probably not. Maybe they're going to try to pick him off. Um and uh, it turns out that they didn't give Daryl a job because Aaron told Deanna, do not give him a job. I have a job for him of mine. Darren, uh, Darren. <laughs> I just mixed Daryl and Aaron's names together. Darren. They're going to fall in love, guys. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. It's been a long week, guys. It really has. <laughs> um, Aaron is going to, oh, whoa, excuse me. Aaron wants Daryl to be another recruiter. He doesn't want Eric to have to keep going out there because Eric fucked up his ankle in the end of uh, in the end of uh, episode eleven. Um, yeah, so that is why uh, Dar uh, Aaron wants Daryl to be the other recruiter. He takes him into like this garage in Aaron's house and um, shows him a motorcycle that he has like uh, covered under this like uh, uh, 
motorcycle cover, whatever the hell you call it. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's got like a bunch of parts and everything. And of course, Daryl used to have the chopper, as we all know. So I think that instantly made Daryl like it scored. It scored Aaron points because Daryl, you know, obviously lost his motorcycle. I think sometime after the group, yeah, when the group lost the prison, that's when Daryl sold the motorcycle and he didn't have it anytime after that. Um, so yeah, I really like that. Uh, mode as well, so I really can't wait to see. Well, guys, I never yawn. I'm sorry. Um, I can't wait to see where they're gonna go with that because yes, I Aaron says I trust you. I think you're good with uh, telling people apart, what as opposed to, like whether a person is good or bad. And I think they're gonna go somewhere with that, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we'll see. I know they're definitely going to touch upon it more so, so we just have to wait and see, basically. Um, and then I'm going to get into the Rick, Carol, and somewhat Daryl storyline. Uh, now, the beginning of the episode, I didn't get all of the audio. And, and, well, after the uh, opening uh, title sequence, I didn't hear what Daryl and Rick and Carol were saying. They were in that spot where the blender was, where the gun was, and I didn't specifically hear what they were saying because... Um, my mom and dad were, well, I watched the show with my dad and my brother, and my mom came into the room, and she was talking, and I, I missed what they said. Uh, sorry about that, guys. But I could tell that Rick is still affect, like, he, like, he trusts this place slightly, slightly, but he still doesn't feel 100% about it because of the missing gun. Now, I don't know if somebody from Alexandria took that gun. What if it's that girl, that Carl was chasing after in the last episode what if she found it what if um an, an outsider took it i mean who's to who's to it would be great if if they if they go this route rick thinks that the alexandria people took the gun they don't want weapons being stored outside of the the walls or they're spying on them or rick thinks this and something goes wrong and they end up killing them all off and then we I don't know like we focus on like another outsider maybe Morgan uh, who I'm gonna get into in this episode um, maybe we focus on another outsider and we see the exact gun that Rick put in the blender so like some random outsider took the gun uh, found the gun and it, it caused Rick the missing gun caused Rick to think that the Alexandria people are up to no good Picks them all up. I don't know. I think that would be genius. We just cut to a shot of an of a of a survivor holding a holding that same gun. I I I don't know. That that would be smart in my opinion. But that's just me. If any Walking Dead creator or writer is reading this, hire me. I'll write that scene. Okay, we're good. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they they have that moment in the beginning. I think basically they're plotting on. Uh, sneaking into the gun storage room in Alexandria to get a, cu a couple of guns and bring them outside and I couldn't tell for sure whether or not they were doing that as a test uh, or uh, to have uh, just keep guns outside I think they were doing it just to keep guns outside uh, in case things went bad and they needed guns for any reason uh, but I think it was for both honestly like Rick wants to see if the Alex if like they know or if they're aware of their their movements and everything or what they're doing uh, the Alexandria people are you know if they're spying on Rick and the gang if they are and those guns are missing then Rick knows something Rick will know something is up but I think mostly they they, they want to do that in order to have guns on the side in case anything goes wrong because as we know in the end of the last episode Rick basically threatened to kill these people if they're not that strong enough and if they're gonna you know get their own Rick's own people killed then mm, he's not gonna stand for that and he's gonna pick them all up and they're gonna take the place for themselves and that's badass Rick Grimes for you now they kill Walker in the beginning of the episode Rick Carol and Derek well Carol kills it but um there's a W carved on its head, okay? And then I'm like, W, okay. I don't know why that is, but I guess we'll figure that out soon. So then they walk off, and the camera does something that, I don't know, got me pretty excited. It pans down from, like, the, the space of the woods to the walker's head, and we see, and it's from the, if it's from the opposite side, because the W's on its head like this, like a, like a regular W, but the walker's on the floor, and it's panning, so we see the W as an M, okay? So as soon as I saw that, I said, Morgan, Morgan, I want him. <laughs> I want Morgan, guys. I've wanted it since the end of the season five premiere, when he took off his 
face mask and he sees the marks on the trees and then the end of the mid-season finale which was by far probably the best moment of the mid-season finale Morgan arriving at the church and seeing the map the world's gonna need Rick Grimes okay I mean shit guys I mean I want Morgan back okay when I saw that M I'm like he did that he, he carved it but then again why would he carve a W unless the zombie was somehow laying down and he carved it from the opposite side of the zombie's head? I don't know. I just really want Morgan. It gave me an ounce of hope because why would they pan that way? I mean, yeah, we apparent and the zombie that Carol shot, this was the same zombie who had the W on the head. So if that that letter, whether it's supposed to signify a W or an M, if it's supposed to signify W, why didn't we see the W when the camera panned? Why did they shoot it from the other side to make it look like an M? Which is what leads me to believe Morgan is out there and he's coming. And I can't wait. I honestly can't. I, the, 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 literally, the rest of the episode. And that was like early on in the episode, tonight's episode. I was like, when is Morgan going to come in? He's going to come in. And then Chris Hardwick comes. Uh, they have a commercial for Talking Dead. And Chris Hardwick's like, all right, join my guest tonight, Kevin Smith. Ross Marcan, who plays Aaron, and then we have a surprise cast member. I'm like, it's gonna be Lenny James. It's gonna be Lenny James. He's never been on Talking Dead. He's gonna come in in the end of the episode. I got so excited, but it was Jesse, that that uh, that blonde who is starting to develop a crush on Rick. The two of them are starting to get really close, really buddy buddy, um, and it's pretty interesting. Honestly, can't wait to see where that's gonna go. So basically, we get um. Deanne is pre preparing for this housewarming party that she wants to throw Rick in the group because they just arrived there. And she's telling everybody, yeah, you got to come by, you got to come by. I love the shots we have of Carol talking with the, uh, what do you call it, with like the, like the, the moms of, of Alexandria. And she's just like blended in so well. And she even says to Rick, I, lo I like being here because it makes me feel invisible again. I can, or I can be invisible again, whatever she said. Because like she... She was sort of that, and I think what she meant by that was she was sort of that way when she was with Ed. She was just like the face that wasn't there, and I know she didn't care for that, but that eventually led to her life as it is now. She's this like ultimate freaking badass who will take you out if you pose a threat to anybody, and that is what everybody loves about Carol so much. So now she's invisible again, and she's pretending. You know, she's pretended all those years. Like, she's been with Ed all those years, and she's like, yeah, I, I love this guy, but he was an abusive asshole. So now she's sort of being invisible again, and she's, like, faking her way. She's, like, showing everybody that she's, like, this really sweet woman who's never picked up a gun before in her life. She doesn't even see where she's in the gun room, and they're like, you know how to use one of these? And she's like, you know, I, no, I, use, I know how to use a handgun. I don't know how to use a rifle or anything. We all know that's not Carol. So I just, it's so many great Carol moments tonight, guys. I like it. Carol has honestly slowly become one of my favorite characters currently on the show. Quite possibly my favorite female character on the show. I mean, Michonne is great, but like, I mean, I don't know, like, Carol's just been through a freaking utter transformation. I mean, that's what I love about her. So, I mean, both are badass, but still, I mean, Carol, it, it still impresses me. And then she has a great moment in the gun room at night. I'm going to get into it because it's so freaking awesome. And I was, I just, I was like, I love that. Uh, but everybody goes to the, and not everybody of Rick's group goes to this housewarming party, but most do. Rick, Carl, Judith, and Carol show up. Um, Sasha at one point shows up. You can tell she's a little affected uh, by everything. She's, again, struggling to adjust to everything. Um, we have... Um, and then we have Abraham and um, uh, Rosita show up at one point. Eugene, absent from the episode. Father Gabriel, again, absent entirely from the episode. I was going to say, did he just die? You know, but he's in the promo for next week's episode, so we're good. Gabriel's still alive. <laughs> um, and then Michonne is even at the party, I think, at one moment. Oh, and then Glenn, Maggie, and Noah. And there was a really, really sweet moment that I don't, it touched me a little bit. Like I felt something like here. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I liked it. Um, Noah's just standing alone at this party. Glenn and Maggie come over, and uh, Otero is also episode uh, absent tonight. But she was in last week in the last week's episode, so that's fine. Um, I mean, I know it's hard to work every one of the main cast, every one of the of Rick's group into the script, but I don't know. Maybe just have them in the background at least. I mean, I don't know. It's just me. 
But there's a really sweet moment between Glenn, Maggie, and Noah. Noah's like, ah, nah, nah, this just really isn't me. I don't fit in here or whatever he says. And then Glenn's like, of course you do, man. You're family or something like that. And they just, you know, they, they cheer him up. I like that moment. I mean, it that was just a really nice little moment just to show how close this group is, how close they've gotten. Um, and then meanwhile, Carol sneaks out to go to the gun room. Earlier in the episode, <clears throat> she had been in the gun room during the day. She opens a window uh, while she's in the gun room, she she unlocks it so she can sneak through the window and get and come in during the party to to snag a couple of guns, which she does. And then uh, she gets caught by uh, Jesse's one of Jesse's kids, her, her son, and because uh, he wants Carol to make him some cookies, and Carol just threatens him into not telling Jesse, his mom, what he just saw her in the gun room. And she basically gives, like, the most threatening thing you could ever tell a little kid. But she can do it because she's fucking Carol. And she's awesome. She showed that she is such a badass in this scene. She still is. Even when she's not wielding weapons. She uses her words. She is manipulative. Of the, I mean, she can use this young kid and get out of trouble of getting, you know, uh, uh, recognized. that Or, or getting... Uh, tattled on that she was in the gun room you know when everybody was at the party and she says yeah if you tell anyone this you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna lose your place in this uh in alexandria you're gonna get tied up to a tree i'm gonna tie you up to a tree i'm gonna let the walkers feed on you scares the shit out of the kid i loved it i love it fucking amazing moment i loved it guys uh it was great um and then we get in one other interesting arc that happens tonight and it's the rick and jesse thing you know, there, there's a couple scenes between them at the party. Rick's drinking a little bit. Uh, Abraham is just, like, comple completely wasted <laughs> because Abraham's a boss. Um, and then Rick and, and Jesse are having this little exchange. He sort of kisses her on her cheek. And the two of them have, like, a shot where they're looking at each other after he kisses her. It's a little awkward. And then she just walks off, and they're staring at each other. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. Something's going to go on between these two. And she's married. Rick meets her husband tonight. And in the final scene in the episode, I don't know what they meant to say with Rick uh, leaning against the wall, one of the walls with the A on his hand because one of the kids stamps an A on his hand saying, oh, you're one of us now. And you get a cool shot of Rick, like, looking satisfied, like, ooh, they trust me. That's good. <laughs> um... So he's just like standing against the wall and he's like this in the end episode. I don't know why. But before that, he sees Jesse and her husband walking by. They wave and say good morning. It's the next morning. And Rick's like, oh, hey, how you doing? And then we cut to behind Rick. The camera is on them. They're in focus. Then they rack focus to the behind of Rick. And we see him lift up his shirt and he has his hand on a gun in the back of his, uh, uh, that's stashed in the, uh, you know, in his pants, you know, in you know, covered by his jacket, and I was like, no, what the hell is Rick gonna do here, like, in the final few moments, like, I didn't pick up on that moment at first, I was like, what the hell is Rick gonna do, I was like, really jittery and thinking Morgan was gonna show up, because I freaking want Morgan back, <laughs> uh, but I saw that, I'm like, uh-oh, Rick doesn't like this guy, uh, what is he gonna do, is he gonna shoot him? We don't know. So that's sort of how the episode ends, and that was basically everything done. Guys, I'm just going to check my notes to make sure I covered everything I wanted to. Again, guys, I'm, yeah, I'm a little tired, as you guys can tell. I just want to make sure I didn't uh, leave anything out. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, so that was it. Um, overall, guys, get into my rating. Uh, the episode was good. Wasn't as good as last week's because that, I don't know, that was just the, like the introduction of something we've never seen before on this show. It was exciting to see where they were going to go with this whole Alexandria thing. And that's why I went so high with last week's rating. Ten tonight's episode was good. It wasn't as satisfying. A little slow. And I think things are going to pick up because I think the tension is going to raise, especially as it looks in the next week's episode. But I think they need some sort of action to move this plot at Alexandria and make it more suspenseful. I like the setting and I'm happy with it, but we need something that's going to set Rick's group off and make them say, I don't know if we can trust this place. we got to keep our guard on extra high. And we need to make sure we take extra precautions because I don't trust it. So in the end, guys, I, I'm waiting for that moment to happen. I think we're going to get it. But I want to keep at this. I'm not saying I want them to leave Alexandria right away because I don't. They just got there. And I want to like keep it at this setting. And I think there's a couple of interesting things they could do with it. So because of that, I want to see them stay. I just need a little excitement. I want somebody to pose a threat for this group and that's what we need for the show i know we have zombies but we also need human threats because it works really well 
All that said, I'm going to give tonight's episode an 8.5. It has its slow moments, and again, there wasn't that suspense and it, uh, that mystery of not knowing things like we had last week's episode, because that was like the brand new episode, like the clean slate of the season. Um, so that's why I, I felt that way. So I'm um, hoping next week's episode is going to be a little bit stronger, but I still enjoyed tonight's episode. Uh, guys, what did you think of it? Let me know down below. Uh, what did you think of Rick's m uh, motion at the end of the episode with him pulling out the gun or him touching the gun? Uh, what do you think is going to happen there? And who, what do you think is meant by that W on the zombie's head? Is it Morgan? Do you guys think it's Morgan? Did you think it was? Was I the only one getting Morgan from that shot? I hope it wasn't just... I think, I think you guys, too. I think you're good. Okay. So, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for being patient for me this week. Guys, I saw Chappie today, Sunday. I'm going to try to get my review up for you guys sometime this week. Also, hopefully, going to get a 100 Games Mockingjay Blu-ray review. I'm going to purchase that. We'll see what else I get up this week. My giveaway is going to be coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.